All right, my friends, welcome to episode 329 of Prof and Dev Play Games, back on your podcast feeds. My name is Larry, the professor at Prof Plays Games on Twitter. Over there is Anthony, the dev at Summer Speak. And this week, we're just going to chill and talk about games we're playing because it's been a rough week. Uh, you know, hearts and minds are with Ukraine and my friends and family who are there and escaping. And it's just, it's been nice to... You know, obviously I'm focused on it and getting aid to people I know and getting aid to people I don't know. Uh, but it has been nice to escape a little bit into Horizon Forbidden West. And um, I feel so powerless with the news, right? Yeah. Um, and that game, I feel so powerful. And it's been really, it's been therapeutic for me to just like inhabit someone else's skin and yeah, inhabit someone else's skin and just feel powerful. Um, it's, I love this game in a way that I did not like Horizon Zero Dawn. I, do, I don't know what the fuck. I know they changed, ma improved everything, but it feels different than Horizon Zero Dawn, even though it's obviously you know, got some of the same it's, mechanics. And... It's the same DNA, but they, I mean, like I said, when do you make everything better in pretty much every way? I mean, it, in a lot of ways, I think the game is greater than the sum of its parts now, in so many ways. Um and so I'm not surprised it's just resonating better with you, because I think the first one was... I mean, you finished the first one. You didn't hate did, it. Yeah. You didn't hate no, it. No, no, no. But you, no, got, no, you, no. Got, you got through it, and you, you enjoyed it well enough. But I just don't think it was across the line for you in enough places. And this one pushes all those elements further along, and it's a much more polished product in that in that way. And systemically, story-wise, visuals, the whole thing. Like, the gamut, it's there. It's got it. Um... Yeah, the story feels way more may, way more coherent for me. Mm -hmm. um, although today, I'm, I have to go back and watch my video. I've been uploading a bunch of my videos to the to the YouTube channel just to kind of I don't know, I like keeping a record of it. Um, but I was playing with my aim controller, which has back paddles, and okay. my daughter was uh, yelling for me during nap time or quiet time. So I put my paused the cutscene, put my controller down, went up to see her, oh, came no. back down. And when I put it down, it hit one of the back paddle buttons. So whatever story happened after the Kurut, or whatever, I think it's called a Kurut, um, where you get Aether, basically. Um, right. Well, I, don't, okay. I don't know what happened. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what the story was. I come back, and it's like, at the end of the whole, you know, it, it must have been like eight minutes or six minutes or whatever. And I was like, well, I guess I'll have to watch that later. Um, but the story uh, is way yeah. more coherent for me. I think so. I th uh, One, I think the story... It makes sense. It's quicker to get going. Like, they already assume yeah. you know a lot more going on. Like, the first game does take quite a while to get into, like, really the big reveals of what the story's actually about, what's going on. We're done with that. You know what's going on from, like, who Aloy is, what the world is, why the machines are there, what's going on. Like, all of that backstory is now set up, so they feel like they can just jump into things much yeah. faster. And mm -hmm. even though I think Forbidden West expands the scope of the world to an unimaginable degree um mm -hmm. for where this can go potentially in the future and what they're talking about like the i don't know this this just feels constantly when I've, i'm playing it just an expansion of the lore to such a huge degree um and like i totally agree just from from where i'm at like we're going to vastly different places not not just on like the continent <laughs> yeah in terms of like what we're what we're doing with the plot so you did aether yeah i just finished that today yeah, aether, aether which is the next one the one in vegas i think is the next one poseidon poseidon i've done poseidon which was aether was the one that was under the throne correct yes correct mm -hmm. and there's poseidon uh i've finished the the third one which uh, kind of expands the world in a different way um, interesting yeah, you just meet new people and you're like, "Oh, holy crap! This is this is amazing." Um, I want to know more about these people. Um, and hopefully you do learn more about them, and maybe there'll be a future a future game or something that expands on on this other group of people. Um, have you have you rolled credits on the game? I have not. I I, hmm. I should say. Um, I want to say yeah. This this week I've been playing uh, Horizon. Um, you haven't been. I saw you playing something else. <laughs> uh huh. Uh oh. <laughs> did you just Breath of the Wild your own experience here? Yes, I I did. Oh um, no. 
just <laughs> fine. Uh, I did on the 28th, on last Monday, I picked up Elden Ring because I'd seen it on streams and then it was basically tipped over by people at work talking about it. Um, And I fucking love that game. Oh my it's God, one of the, the best games I've ever played. Hands what down. What the fuck is happening right now? <laughs> it is what? fucking incredible. And Hori- Hor- Hor- Horizon is a great game. This game is going to make Horizon worse for me. Oh, no. Dude. Not in a bad, not in a way. Like, Horizon is a very different type of, it's focused on a different type of thing. Oh, um, yeah. And just the way that it's presented. It's like, here's the two map. examples of open worlds and how yes. how to do them. That's what happened in 2017. It is. Horizon Zero Dawn, and they're getting... It is. Fuck, it's happening again. <laughs> it is happening again, exactly. And after putting um, very many sleepless nights, because, oh my god, there's always one more thing to do. Um, oh yeah. In Elden Ring. I understand its review scores. 100%. Oh, like, I see why it, it it's a masterpiece of a game. Um and I haven't really wanted to talk it in on our group chats or anything because the way that I am truly playing this game is trying is I don't really want advice while playing it. I don't want to mm-hmm. be told what I'm to do. Mm-hmm. I'm just in the world experiencing it. Um, and if there's something I want to find, I'll, I'll Google it and look it up. Um, yeah. But I don't I don't want any random advice because there's always people like, oh, you should start and you should go here and here and here or oh, you're in that spot? Well, there's all this stuff you can go do here, and this will make the game easy this way or that. I'm like, no. This game is truly just a exist in the world, find things. Um, Yeah, I I can talk about this game for a while. So if we want to talk about Horizon more, or I can talk about this, because I think this game is really incredibly important. Let's wrap Horizon before we go into Elden Ring, but I'm glad you brought it up, because I saw you playing Elden Ring. I was like, he must have rolled credits on Horizon, but I didn't hear that he did. And I I bought Elden Ring 2, and I was like, I'm not doing that again. Because I did it in 2017. I was like, I'm not. I'm going to play Horizon until till the I end. I need cause... to be doing this now, basically. While people at work are playing and how oh, yeah. it's just yeah, in the yeah. zeitgeist. I just, I, there's a part of me that's like, I just want to experience it while the world is experiencing this thing. Oh, um, you're going you're gonna to come back and finish Horizon if you're, oh, you're that close to the end. So. 100%. Actually, I don't know how close to the end of Horizon I am, honestly. Oh, shit. <laughs> That's the thing. I finished the third, and I'm like, I don't know. It could be two more quests, main quests. It could be six more. I don't know with Horizon. Um, yeah. Horizon, there's like, it was this can't talk of, like, gorillas, like, oh, you could mainline Horizon in, I think they said, like, 20 hours or something. Yeah. I call that bullshit. <laughs> I mean, I'm 25 hours in, and I just finished the first, you know... Um, I don't know, the first of the um, subordinate functions. Um, and I was going to ask yeah. you, actually, because I talk about in that first, you know, obviously there's some story spoilers here um, for yeah. Horizon. Um, that first part with uh, Zenith or whatever, just after where you're talking to Gaia, yeah. and she talks about the three main subordinate that she needs, yep. and then there's like these extra ones. Do you have a chance to get the extra ones in this game? No, or is that... not oh, that okay. I know of. Got it. Like, okay. that could be something, but I don't think so. I don't think, yeah. I think those are, they're just like, those are gone. Like, you just do not, you can't get them. Um, okay. Yeah, because they are gone. <laughs> they're straight up gone. Um, except there's, I don't know if this is true or not, and why I don't know where the how the game progresses from where I'm at. I know the next step that I have to do, um, which which you know what the, the plan is. Get the, the three mm-hmm. AI, then get Hephaestus. Like, then Gaia yes, can exactly. reabsorb. I'm at the point where it's like, okay, we're going to try to get Hephaestus. Okay. But which following the plan that's fine but there's part of me that's like well we know the zeniths have a copy of apollo all right so i'm like are we gonna get that at some point um are we gonna need it i I don't know what's gonna happen there's still which is great with horizon there's just a ton of stuff where i'm like i don't i have general thoughts on where the story might go but it's still open to be surprising um which is great Uh, i appreciate that um still a gorgeous game my god um, it, you know, I'm still playing performance, and I'm, I think you are too. Yep. Um, still it, gorgeous. It looks amazing. I, uh, um, you know, it's a T for teen, so I'm not playing with my daughter, obviously, but um, I did load it up so she could see it, and she just ran through. There was nothing. She just ran through the, the fields and swam in the water or whatever. She was just like, this looks real. And I was like, yeah, <laughs> it does. It does. She was, um, she was very interested. I think if you're going, so I'm trying to think, did Aether, have you, gone, have you gone up to the Yosemite area? Yet? No, uh-uh. 
Am I able to do that right now? I thought you had to. It's a snowy area. That was that. The that cool. Doesn't... You had to go talk to someone, like the the main, like a uh, tribal leader before the, the cool was like, the yeah, it was yeah. Is that Yosemite? That? That's Yosemite. Oh, because when I was looking, I was like, this looks like Yosemite, but I don't, I don't think it is that's, because that's Yosemite. I haven't, because I haven't gone to. I'm, I'm. I thought I was east of Vegas. Uh, no, you were west of Vegas at that point. I am. Yeah. Oh I, shit! I have to look open the map, but I'm pretty sure oh, that's because I was like, is is the bulwark supposed to be Half Dome? Um, yeah, it's Half Dome. It's the wreck of Half Dome, and then behind it is El Capitan. Oh my god! Because I was looking at, it, I was like, this looks like Yosemite, but it can't be because I'm not east of, or I'm not west of Vegas, so I just west completely of... discarded it. Um. Yeah, what? you were you were totally west of Vegas when you're up in that area. Oh shit. By okay. quite a ways. Um, God damn it. <laughs> yeah, that that's that, that whole bulwark. Bo- bo- that's Yosemite. Um, it looked like it, but I was like, this can't be it. <laughs> yep. Because, oh my God, I would have enjoyed it more if I let myself believe I was right. You Ugh. you were correct. Um, God damn it. I was like, this looks like Yosemite, but it can't be. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I'm trying to think if you've actually hit the Redwoods yet, then. You may not have yet. I have not seen any Redwoods. <laughs> oh, you'll know when you see them. Exactly. Like, yes. I that um, will be no question. But god damn it. <laughs> yeah. Really? I yeah. wow. I fooled myself then. You totally did. Good job. You played yourself. I um, did. I was like this there's no way this is true. <laughs> this is no way this is it looks like it. Nope, but it's not. There must be some other part that looks like Yosemite. Or god damn it. God damn it. <laughs> uh yeah, so that that is a thing up there. It looks it's great. I'm trying to see where the redwoods are because it's very i mean you'll know when you hit it um it's called the stand of the sentinels so yeah you wouldn't have it's just west of yosemite you'll go there probably after vegas i think you'll have to go through it and you'll know when you're in the redwoods it's just like oh god they captured this so well giant fucking trees um and then yeah during the south you can find the sequoias in the kind of to the south of the, um, what was it? What's the main Tanakh stronghold where the cool, you, the big arena? Yeah. Uh-huh. So like to the uh, southwest, you get into places. You're like, yep, that's a sequoia. Um, so I don't know. It it's crazy. I've been to San Francisco. I've been all over San Francisco already. Um, so I've done a lot in the game. I think there's only one part of the map that hasn't been. Um, discovered for me. So is that where Hephaestus is? I don't know. I don't think so. Oh, okay. Um, I don't oh, know man. what's down there. So I that's can't... why I'm like, I don't know how many st- missions I have left. So I am so confused. Uh, okay. So I've been playing this game kind of in a way that I don't normally play. Um, sorry, I'm still my mind's blown. Um, <laughs> the just the way that the map works then, because I've been. Uh, you know, I started off, we talked about before, where I just, I stayed in the daunt for like fucking 10 hours yep. and did as much as I could. Um, and then I started to do a mix of main story and side quests. Like, I want to like clean up all the side quests before I move on. And I'm like, I will burn out from this game if I do that. I need to like do a mix. So I, then I, I just like ran through from, God, one of the side, one of the side quests I did near um, where the embassy was. And then just ran straight all the way over to the, the throne, basically, to start the okay. whole um whatever so i ran through that whole area so i ran through nevada yeah roughly um yeah i ran through nevada in like 10 minutes <laughs> yeah <laughs> i mean it's, it's condensed and whatever it's else. compressed it's their own take on like yeah. like how condensed utah is in um zero dawn colorado yeah. and all that this condensed but yeah i mean there's basically from plain song you go over some mountains um yep yep, yep where your base kind of is on the other side of your base is uh there's like the big solar array thing mm-hmm. town that has a bunch of the old solar panels all circled around it um yeah that's basically nevada and then to the south is nevada like the vegas ruins um wow okay it's, just, so it's I've basically the 15 then. it's like the 15 <laughs> corridor basically yeah yeah okay so i've been in the i've been to california already then Awesome. You have, you have, you've touched Yosemite. Oh um, my god! No wonder I liked it so much. <laughs> I really like that. I, like the, just the um, the story, the characters. I love the base. 
because when I think it was Telote or whatever his name was, the guy with one arm. Yeah. Um, at the end of that whole sequence, he's like, I'm, I want to join you. Okay, go back to my base. I'm going to call yeah. Zoe and you're going to go back to my base or Vo or Vo. Vo. Zo. Yeah. Vo, yeah. Uh, and I was like, cool. We're doing like ally stories in this game. Like, uh huh. There's Doc, Daka after that whole thing. I think it was Daka or Deka, who's like, help me find my grandkid. And I was like, if I find her grandkid for her, is she going to join me too? <laughs> like, yeah. do I, am I starting to like build allies for the final push or whatever? I, I um, think so, maybe. But I mean, yeah. it's growing. Like, I've got a number of allies there. Um, and when you go back to the base, do you like have tasks to do? And well, you can talk to them. Kinda, and then usually yeah. each of them have now had like one si- main like character side quest, like oh, more involved they side quest. Start at the base. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Okay. Like I have one with Vo that I finished. I have one for um forgetting his name, the guy with one arm. Um Yeah, it's like Telote or Yeah, Te- Telote. Hekoto or whatever. Ah, yeah. Um but I have a quest for him. He gave me something to do. So it's it's companion quests, basically. Yeah, um, that's what it feels like. And this, the, the stories are so... Like, I feel like the writing is really well done and the stories mm-hmm. are rich. Like, they either had fucking, I don't know, CD Projekt Red writers, like, come over to fucking Gorilla, or they, like, we're gonna do what Witcher 3 did. <laughs> yeah. Um, it, and I feel like they've nailed it more that, better than any any other game that I've seen since Witcher 3. Nail the kind of side content. Yeah. I, I think so. Uh, the, I will reiterate the thing from last time that I think sells it even more on their their side quest is that this game probably has the best version of like nonverbal communication yeah from the from the characters because they just do like you can you can understand their body language in this game um and it's not the first time a game's kind of been able to do this but this is the first one where i'm like i consistently can see it i understand what the emotions are that the characters without them having to say words i understand the subtext from the characters yep um which is powerful. Like that's stuff you usually can get out of visual mediums in like movies yep. with real actors, but it's hard to do in digital 3d, um, right. like real time 3d. Uh, the mo capping is insane. They did it. In they did it. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> um, it, is, it, it adds so much. Like I was talking to Kartik about, you know, he just finished, you might've seen, he finished horizon zero dawn and we're t- he was talking about my criticism of the animation. He's like, I didn't really get it. Like I thought the animation was fine. And then I realized the body language is not great in horizon zero dawn and i was like yeah that's one of the things that got way better in forbidden west yeah um so and like i said it may be industry defining in that way um yeah currently in right. forbidden west um because i have really hard pressed to even think of like other games there's other games that are close like god of war um and last of us part two i'd say last of us two yeah is last of us part uh two is probably the closest Right. But even then it doesn't match completely. Um it's I it's feel like, like it's like they took that technology. Like maybe there is a first party Sony mocap technology <laughs> that they're yeah. they're sharing. Right. And and this is just the next iteration of it. Um, well, I feel like I feel like uh, Last of Us Part Two did like the facial stuff is very similar to me, yeah. but the body stuff isn't. I feel like the body I would stuff agree. I feel like the like if I think about Ellie, like a lot of her body language is like whole body spinning or moving, and not so much like subtlety of like limbs or yeah, you know whatever. I, yeah, so so the the one thing, and this will be a nice I'd probably transition to Elden Ring. Um, the one thing that um I've finally gotten over in the, in these kind of open world games is like the plethora of fucking markings on the map. Like yep. I'm not I'm not swayed. I'm not trying to tick all of them off. I'm just uh, diving into things that pop up that seem interesting uh, and then just moving on to the main quest. Um, and, you know, Elden Ring, <laughs> I think yeah. you can probably tell us, is a little different. It is fundamentally different. Um, it's in the vein of Breath of the Wild, but taken to another extreme, and that there are no map markings. It's not to say the map isn't useful, though. Um you can set your own markers and do whatever on it. Um, and you have to expand your map. You have to go find maps in the world. And it un- adds those places filled in very illustratively mapped. The great thing about the illustrative map is you can zoom in and study it. And you can be like, oh, there's ruins there. I should go hmm. over and look at what's there. Um, there's a cave illustrated there. There's a cave over there. I need to go find that. Um, it's like looking at an actual like drawn map. <laughs> Not, but if you put a pin on it, it won't show up in your world. 
Oh, it does. It will put oh, a, it it'll put a oh, blue okay. light that shoots to the sky. Um, cool. Thin, like, and it, you can, and it puts that pin on, like, on your compass so you can direct towards it. There's two different things. There's markers you can, are they markers or icons you can put on your map? They're like Breath of the Wild icons. Yeah. And there's like seven or eight different types of icons, like skulls or chest or whatnot. And you can put those as many as you want on, I think, well, not as many. I think you have a hundred that you can place down. That's a lot. <laughs> uh, yeah. But then there's, um, I don't know what else they call it. They call the, these quick ones where you can just have your cursor over a part on the map, select it, and it puts a, a blue arrow. And you can have a number of those. And it actually, each one increments numberly. So it's like one, two, three. And it, mm-hmm. So you can actually like make a waypoints if you want to. Like, okay, I'm going to one. And I hit one, I go to two, continue around. Um, That's cool. Yeah, it, it's very effective, um, very simple. But there is no map clutter. Unless you put clutter on there. Um, I guess the biggest clutter piece is your, uh, what they call bonfires in this game, um, grace points. That are your teleporters. So, And those are when you activate them, they reset like the enemies in the world, right? If you rest at them. Oh, you okay. don't. You don't. Whenever you activate one for the first time, when you find it, you don't have to rest at it. It just activates mm. it. So you can turn it on. If you die, you'll spawn at that one, the last one you touched, but you haven't rested, so nothing resets yet. But yes, if you rest at one, the world resets like a Souls game, um, which is fine. Um, so I don't even know where to begin with this game. Um, I can, wasn't. Can I ask you... oh, sorry, go, ahead. go ahead. No, uh, go ahead. I'm going to ask one question before you um, figure out where you want to start. Uh, in terms of story, do you see any fingerprints of George R. R. Martin? Yes, 100%. Uh, God damn it. <laughs> not not in a way of like <laughs> he's so the cool. one writing this active story. It's yeah. clear in his blog and it's clear how it's written. He wrote history and a world bible for them. Right. And they they chose to work with it and build from it. So mm-hmm. the key parts that I'm like, oh, this is Martin is there's just there's there's names and things and you're like that's totally a, a Martin name. Like mm-hmm. <laughs> like yeah. you can you can tell his style like when it shows up. And you're like, right. "Oh yeah, okay." But you can also tell where uh, Miyazaki and the the Souls team have and from have expanded on that and gone. All right, we, he's given us this great lore with all these hooks. Now let's take those hooks and run with it. Um, right. But yeah, um, so yes, Martin is through and through this game. Um, but I would never say he's the the shining star of the writing team, and right. I don't think he ever intended to be. So, right. um, so. I don't even want to talk about this game. Um, let's just talk about like, okay, yes, it is an it is a Souls game. It is difficult. I have bounced off every other Souls game that I've ever played. Yeah, um, Dark Souls. I've played for probably about five or six hours. It was fine. Um, didn't didn't run a stick with it. Like it wasn't. I don't care that the game is so challenging, but there's a friction to getting like when I'm fighting a boss, when I die, if the run back to that boss, what I actually want to be working on and like learning skills and train myself on takes a few minutes. I kind of start checking out. I only do that for so long before I'm like, I'm out. I don't want to deal with this. It's too much. Um, that's effectively removed in this game. There's a few points. Um, where it's not bosses, actually. It's whenever there's places in the game that are very Souls dungeon-like, Bloodborne dungeon-like. Um, just enormous castles with multiple grace points. And there's times whenever it's like, the tension is, can I I need to leave the grace point I'm at, find the next grace point, yeah, and not die before it. And there was one point where I was like, oh my god, am I going to be able to do this? And I did, finally. Um it took me many times, and the fact that, weirdly, I died to random enemy night like 15 times, but one shot the boss. So, who knows? Oh, um, huh. interesting. It's an interesting conundrum there. Like, I just, this stupid night, like, it was a special night. It wasn't a mini boss, but it was still, like, a night I hadn't really gone up against just wrecked me over and mm-hmm. over until I learned its moveset. But it, until I could beat that night, I couldn't get to the next grace point. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, so it was just learning. But then I guess that leads to the other piece, though. While I was kind of brick-walled at that night, it pushed me to explore other parts of the castle. 
and be like, maybe there's other ways around. Maybe there's another grace point I don't know about. And so I'd spend different runs being like, okay, fine. I'm not going to go through that door. I'm going to go through this other door and get on top of the roofs and run around the roofs of the castle. I found all sorts of stuff up there. Didn't oh, find cool. a grace point, but it's not <laughs> like I wasn't being rewarded with other things. I was getting uh, this game's equivalent of souls runes. So I was gaining in power a bit. I was getting new items, learning what was going on. And really, if I didn't, was just like, ah, I just feel like a brick wall. I don't want to deal with this. You can just teleport out. You can teleport back to your grace point of where I had been. I can just teleport out and go explore someplace else. Nothing's yeah. stopping me. So with the immediacy to get back to bosses and that ability just to be like, mm, I'm not feeling this right now. I want to go do something else. Takes away all my frustrations I've had with the Soulsborne games. Um, and this yeah, game wonder... is not easier. Like, it yeah. is a fucking difficult game. Combat is very meaningful, very punishing if you make mistakes. Um, mm -hmm. You can out-level things, though. That's just because you have a giant world to explore now. So if you feel like you're under-leveled or getting getting trounced, there's no shame in just being like, I'm just going to go someplace else and gain some, gain some runes and level up some. Yeah. I'll come back to this. Do you find that the game has that Breath of the Wild quality where you would just see something in the distance or and you would go and there would be something like whatever yes. it was big or small there's rewards everywhere either in like yes. a nice view or a tiny thing to pick okay yes okay cool that's right really so cool. constantly rewarding for exploring everywhere um this is this is very much inspired by breath of the wild but i think it takes everything from breath of the wild and just does it better it i wouldn't say better breath of the wild is a zelda game which is a very stripped down type of rpg yep this is not a stripped down RPG. This is a super deep RPG. There's tons of items and loot and just different things and that kind of just mix together. It's not like you're just going getting like Korok seats. It's like, no, that thing that you climbed up the mountain and found or did this long quest chain and got, yeah, it gave you this badass new weapon. You may not be able to use it, but I guess <laughs> I'm going to respec at a point and I'm going to try it anyway because fuck yeah. Why not? You got the you got the Iron Throne in a giant in a sword. <laughs> I, I didn't even know I was going to get that thing. I did it though. Um, I was going through a, going through like a side castle. It's not even part of the main quest. Um, That's the found... reason why I, I bought the game because when Travis showed that, I was like, "It's not going to go down in price. I'm just going to get it." Because uh, yes, I I kind of I could kind of completely forgot George R. R. Martin had a hand in this. Yes, uh, somehow it is a sword of swords. Fucking cool. <laughs> Um, so. it's so ridiculous, but, um, the easiest way I can actually explain this game for me and from a person who's playing kind of like CRPGs back in the like mid nineties and PC is this is Daggerfall, old Elder Scrolls, mm. basically, um, free to go anywhere. You'll find random things. Some things are just huge, expansive parts of the map that you would never even imagine were there. Um, and it's kind of up to you just kind of traverse it and go, if you go to some place that's harder, you'll very quickly know that you're outmatched there and you should leave. Um, right. the world is can. telling you, <laughs> yeah, the world's telling you, or you're like, fine, I'm going to stick around and get punished, but I'm going to get some stuff from here. Yeah. Um, but it gives you that choice. So uh, to me, it, it, it actually feels a lot like that. And it's in a weird way, the closest to, that feeling of playing D and D in some ways. Oh, cause it's just so free. Right. And there's random loot that maybe it doesn't even work for you. It doesn't matter that it doesn't work for you. You found new armor, you found different weapons, you found random items that don't like, this is where it's gotten better. You can see what the item does, but there's just a lot of random items that you're like, what the fuck did I just pick up? <laughs> Let me go check my inventory. <laughs> like, Oh, that's interesting. Is okay. there an encumbrance? In this yes. Uh, well, there's not encumbrance for what's in your inventory. There's encumbrance for what you have equipped. Oh, okay. um, yeah. You have to manage your weight, basically, like how much weight you can have. And right. there's like, if you're under a light load, medium load, or heavy load, depends, makes a difference on like how your um, your rolls are. And if you're over your, your equipped encumbrance, you like very, very slow walk. Um mm -hmm. But yeah, it's basically if you want to be like super fast, dodgy person, you want to you want to stick with very light armors that stay light. But it's a stat you can increase um, to yeah. increase those thresholds. Um, 
so it has aspects of that. Um, doesn't have map icons. It doesn't have a quest log. That's want, so interesting. To if me. you want to keep track of quests, I mean, there's tons of NPCs. I've done quests, but it's not like the game's telling me about them. I talk to the people. They tell me some lines. They're not. They ask you to do some stuff, and they're like, in some ways, it's very true to the world of being like, I'll be over in this region of the world. Come find me. Um, and if like, you don't write it down, you can't access that information again, kind of thing. Nope. Sometimes they'll just be gone. And I found them like 20 hours later (laughs) (laughs) and not even intending to just being like, Oh, Hey, funny seeing you here. That's right. You did. You did did say you're going to go over here. Cool. What, what are we doing? Um, and so it's, it's not, I wouldn't say it's like the souls game. It's not traditional storytelling in that way. Mm -hmm. I think it's interesting. Um, cause it's just the NPCs in the world acts like it's, the NPCs act like they're living in the world, basically, in the, in some way. They're not, they're not. Oh, here's the thing I would just want you to do. It's like no, they they talk as if they live in this world or they're going to places in this world and doing things. Um, yeah. And there's stuff where you, you can kill NPCs. I don't know if you should. <laughs> I've killed one uh, through doing. I talked to a couple people a couple times, and then. They're like, hey, uh, here, here's this item. Go, if you can find someone that wants that, let us know. Uh, don't let us know. Like, give it to them. And I found another NPC that was like, oh, I want that item. And then I come back after time passed, and they're dead. <laughs> um, Did the item kill them? I don't know. Oh, I have no okay. fucking clue what's going on. Um, <laughs> but I got all their item, all their 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 armor and everything. Oh, you fucking looted them. Yeah. Yeah, that's what it was. And you inspect them and like inspect the scene, and it's like here. Uh, here's here's their items and they were a vendor so here's a an item you can take to a vendor in the hole the, like kind of like your home base mm-hmm. to another vendor and they will expand their inventory with what that that merchant had as well um so you never lose merchants basically in that way like what the items they have mm. um available to you but i don't i don't know if it's good or bad that that character's dead i'm pretty sure i didn't have to do what I did. And they would um, still be alive if you didn't do it, kind of thing. Yeah. But I don't know how that affects the story and the endings. Because I know is there's there a like, lot of endings. <laughs> is there an overarching like quest? Like thing yes. you're supposed to be doing? Oh, okay. Yes. You're you're reforging like the Elden runes and reforging the Elden Ring. Um oh, okay. you are a, you are a tarnished and the prophecy is that a tarnish will rise up and reforge the Elden Ring and become the Elden Lord. Okay. Um very very simple the the prophecy piece is very much i'm like oh that's totally martin um yes, definitely <laughs> it just felt um there's a like a lot of themes with hands and fingers kind of stuff um uh-huh. going on with rings on hands and on fingers and the whole thing um done taken from the FromSoft team to a very disturbing level at times um because <laughs> this is this game has some just crazy disturbing imagery in it um yeah it, so I'm not playing with my daughter then. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, not at all. Um, yeah. But I mean, I've had experiences in this game that I haven't had in experiences in games in a very long time. Um, wow. Of just being surprised. Um, I have no clue how they made this game at the scale that they made it in the time frame that they made it. No way. Like, oh, wow. Wow. Ba- People have talked about it's like gargantuan, but it, it is. really is, huh? Huh. It's more gargantuan than you can even imagine. Wow. Uh, because you're like, oh, I see the map size. That's not the whole map. Um, I wonder if the whole map has been uncovered by people so far. Or if there's like I still think it secrets. has. People have data mined it. So I'm uh, pretty sure you uh, can. Okay. F- they will all be there. But yeah. um, there's a point in the game where I went into a building. It, the only thing, it's just kind of a round building. And then the middle of it is a platform. You stand on it. It's a big elevator. Okay. It's an elevator. I've taken elevators in the game before. Hit it. It starts going down. It goes down for almost 60 seconds. Oh. I'm just sitting on this thing, and it opens up to this giant cavernous expanse that is probably the size of a quarter of the map again. Oh, my God. And it's the most gorgeous thing. It's beautiful. And it... 
it's so I'm like, when is a game giving me this where I'm just like going down this elevator and after like 20 seconds, it's just like the dark tomb. You're like, what the fuck? Like, what is it uh, loading right now? <laughs> yeah, I'm like, and we're not loading. We're on PS5. We're not loading anything. So what's what's going on? And then it opens up and you're still on it for like another 30 seconds. Um, And you're just like, I, I mean, my mouth was just hanging open and being like, what the hell? Where am I? What is going on? I just went into a building and went on a platform. <laughs> Why am I in an entire new place? Um, wow. Were there, and I, other... I want to say that that's not the only time that's happened in this game. <laughs> For that specific place, were there other ways that you could get in there? Or was that like the only entry point? I don't know. That's, that'd be interesting if like big places like that, like you could only enter one place so people could fucking miss it. Um, I assume there's tons I, of shit people can miss. I'm sure there. they could be missed. I, there's nothing down there that I'm, as far as I can tell, that is main story. Oh, okay. There's no, like, if you just don't go to this thing, I don't think you'll ever go down there. Um, yeah, right. There, there's a lot of stuff that I've done in the game that I'm like, has nothing to do with the main story. It's all optional, and that's one of the things that's totally crazy about the game and making a game this big is they are just accepting that not it. Most players aren't going to see most of this content. Not at all. And that's fine. But it's there. The aggregate is so crazy, though, because all the story, you know, kind of just the anecdotes or whatever I've heard of the game so far and, you know, Reddit or um, the odd Twitter thing or whatever. Like, the, uh, taking all that media in, even though you haven't seen it, you realize, holy shit, there's so much in this game. You know, it's just so much to explore. Yeah. Um, and I think even reading the reviews and stuff, wasn't ready to truly comprehend how mm-hmm. big it big it was in that way um and it's generally fun to explore that's cool right. that's i'm so excited about all this because it's the next game i'm playing um and i also have bounced off multiple souls games <laughs> um so that's that's really cool that i cannot believe what you said that it's like one of the best games you played um, uh yeah i'm I will say, I mean, there are times, like, the, the boss, I beat the third, what I'd call, like, main quest rune boss. I think they even might be optional. I probably could have skipped them. I don't mm-hmm. know. But it seems like it, but I did it. The third rune boss. Um, It took me about 30 attempts. I Damn. just got wrecked multiple times. Like, and that was uh last night. I During... The day yesterday on Saturday, I played some and just got wrecked by this. And I was like, I'm going to take a night off from the game. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, I just need to. But I didn't stop thinking about it. And I was like, and this is where I'm fine, was like Googling. It wasn't really the boss, but I was like, okay, I'm weak in these areas. I need need some ideas on where to go um, to get some items to try, basically. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I was like, okay, I want to go find this type of weapon or that. I think I need to change up my play style for this boss. Um, yeah. Which is fine. I'm like, fine, Google that. Because there's tons of stuff. That is the that is also a detriment. Because you're like, I don't know where to find certain things. Because there could be anywhere. Let's just wander. Right. Um, but yeah. Um, but yeah, it took like 30 attempts. But I, I beat them tonight. Um, well, right before five, right before dinner. Beat that. And then a cutscene played. And the world changed a bit. So... That happens. Wow. It's a whole new thing that happened in the world and changed a little region of it. And now I have new things to explore in that region. Um, Which you're just like, what do you mean? And the fact that I could skip that, theoretically. Like, I didn't have to do this boss, I don't think. Yeah. Um, So it's a right. different game. It's, it is From's masterpiece. It truly is. Do you have a notebook with you? You're taking notes in as you go? I have a notepad on my computer because I oh, okay. play play with a PS5 on my computer monitor. Computer. Um, so I just have a notepad plus plus page up where I can just write things down as I need to. Um, I, I'm kind of excited about playing this game for, you know, everything you just mentioned, like it's I'm hyped up. <laughs> like I just I I'm, I've been looking for another um, Breath of the Wild experience since Breath of the Wild, obviously. Um and it sounds like it's going to scratch that itch minus the combat. That's going to be fun. Um, but I don't know. Like, I, I think back to like Hollow Knight where like those bosses were like fucking challenging and shit. And I'd do them like 30, 40 times. Yep. And then like it was just so rewarding when you finally beat them. 
Uh, um, yeah, and, that, and this game has some of that. that. This is my thing. When it say it's Breath of the Wild, it's Breath of the Wild if like Breath of the Wild had very deep combat. Because this yeah. has very deep combat and um, leveling and gearing systems. Like, very deep RPG systems built into it. Um, well, haven't they? Hasn't so- from Soft like been pretty open about like wanting to be like a darker, deeper Zelda? I think so. And if they succeeded... I'll be honest. Um, <laughs> yeah. Because that's kind of, that's what it is. Um, yeah. Uh, it's, uh, people aren't wrong for it getting the scores that it's getting now after playing it for, geez, 40 hours in the week. Um, it's, it's incredible. Um, and well, I just can't stop thinking about it. It's crazy. <laughs> it's got to be incredible to kick you off of Horizon when you're like at the end game. <laughs> Um, you know, because that was a game you were enjoying quite a bit. I, I was, um, yeah. Um, obviously, the water cooler work conversations. You know, you gotta. I've I've been tempted to like peek at what the game has to offer. I'm like, if I do that, I'm not gonna stop. So, oh, I've you got won't. To, That's the thing. You won't. Yep. That's why I've got to finish Horizon. And I, you know, I'm I put 25 hours in, and I'm just through Aether. I'm like, if there are two other ones, like, am I gonna put like 75 hours into this game? I think so. I think it'll yeah. be somewhere between like. I think it's probably going to be about 60 to 70 hours total. Yeah, that sounds right. Which I'm like, it's still huge for a game. Um, yeah, it's just, unfortunately, Horizon also released again before, <laughs> before uh, a game-changing open world it game must again. feel so unlucky. I, I mean, the thing, if they... I completely understand them not wanting... Like, I commend them going, like, we're not going to crunch to get this out for the holiday. Yeah. But this Horizon would have been better served coming out in the holiday um, yeah. than a week and a half before Elden Ring. Yep. Um, wow. They thought they, like, dodged Breath of the Wild 2, and then they got maybe. this. Maybe. Yeah. But, I mean, whatever. They're, they're still selling, like, hotcakes. That, that they are. Um, and it's fucking fantastic. It is, yes. you, know, you know, if you ascribe to the, you know, compete against yourself, not others. Like, they've competed against themselves, and they've, they won because it's way better. Yeah. Than, it is way better. It's a great. It's a great game. Um, I would say it follows the more traditional open world stance on how how to do kind of more of the checklisty open world. Yes, and I think absolutely. it does it does it very well. It does it better than I think like AC Valhalla did it. Oh um, my god! Yes. Honestly, yeah. Ubisoft has gotten pretty bad in that regard. Um, AC Valhalla is so hard for me because I, I don't know what I'm missing. But I'm like, what is the main quest? Where am I yeah. supposed to go for that? Yeah. Um, yeah, it's been it's that one's rough. Yeah. Um so I, I think Horizon distills all of that into a very, very good version of that type of open world game. Um and Elden Ring is just a distillation of the, the Breath of the Wild line of open world. Um so cool. And just saying, hey, we can do this again and we can do it even more than Breath of the Wild did. And I don't know. It's crazy, dude. I, but I definitely, there's something about like going into Elden Ring with just being like, Hey, don't read a ton on it. Don't get, unless you, this is the thing. It's easy to have other people, like people at work that really want to be like, okay, well here, I want to teach you how to play the game. And I'm like, I don't want you to teach me. Yeah. Like I, I really don't, I don't want, I don't want your screen share. I don't want anything like a, because the person at work, she did a earlier in the week, like other people at work were playing. She's like, Oh, let me, uh, let's get together at like six 30 on the, the work discord and I'll screen share like the start of the game and stuff. And like good advice. And I was like, Nope, for me, don't mm-hmm. want that. Like, no oh, thanks. There are other people at work that wanted that, but I'm like, for me, that's not how I wanted to experience the game. And right. I'm glad I didn't and only look up stuff when I, and when I'm ready to look stuff up. Um, yeah. And yeah, I, I, and I have no shame with anyone who just wants to go look stuff up in the game. It's huge. So, well, so many there's, reviewers. There's, crypt, there's cryptic things that you're like, I don't know. I would never solve that without looking something up, but that's okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, so many reviewers are like, or whatever, people who are playing it now are like, play with a guide. Like, don't, don't look, you know, have a guide. Don't like follow it step by step and like do everything it says. But like at a certain point, you're going to want to look at a guide. Like, then there's no shame in that. Like, just have one ready and then look at what you want and then move on. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I appreciate that. So, um, 
Yeah, I'm pretty excited for that. I'm shocked how much I'm enjoying this game. And I would say yeah. it, it doesn't it didn't start that way of being like the first 10 hours of like this is good. I'm having a good time with it. But as every hour I put into the game, the deeper I got into it and the more I fell in love with it. So it's just kept getting better and better. Yeah. Um which is That's insane. Like, which is just incredible. Yeah. Well, I mean, like, what is it? I don't March, know. <laughs> March 6th right now? Yeah. And we've got like two game of the year candidates. Yep. Um, in my view, even though I haven't even touched the Elden Ring yet, but everyone, you know, fucking everyone on our Discord yeah. seems to be playing that goddamn game. Um, and then friends I have on text, uh, they're not part of Discord, are also playing that game. Um, and then the other game of the year contender, Pokemon Legends Arceus. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I've yes. I've been, uh, been playing with uh, my daughter this uh, weekend, and she uh, has enjoyed it. I will tell you, though, and I, don't, I haven't played a Pokemon game before. This is the first one I've really dug into. It is talky as fuck. Yes. Uh, it explains six different ways how to do the, that you need to do the thing. And yep. like, I got it the first time. I don't like it was like an hour of conversation before we could really do anything. Um, and my daughter was just like, uh, <laughs> can we actually do something? I was like, OK, this is bad if she's like, can we actually get on with the thing now. Um, she enjoyed it. She didn't ask to play it again, though. We played it hmm. for or she did actually play, ask to play it twice. Um, and then she didn't ask to play it again after that. Um, hmm. and I was like, Hmm, I, w- I wonder, um, what that means. Maybe, you know, she just, you know, maybe she'll come back to it. She wanted to play Mario 3d world today. Um, which was, um, interesting. We played that, uh, quick level. And then one of the levels was a captain toad level in super Mario 3d world. And she's like, no, 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 I want to play captain toad. So we played that instead. Um, and it's just like a, it was like a, uh, uh walk down memory lane of the pandemic because it marks when you played the level last and like uh, 2020 2021 <laughs> <And> all throughout <laughs> those two years when we did play that game i was like wow we played this when you were two <laughs> and now you're four and a half almost five um so yeah that's you know pokemon it, it seems fun it seems basic <laughs> yeah so I mean, easy. It, they're, they're a, it's a basic jrpg it is my first jrpg yeah, in so many yeah. ways. Well, it's like I mean, it's a step up from Metopia, which is oh my god, Metopia. By the way, um, so we played. Was it this week we played that? Last week? I don't know if I talked about it last week. Um, we played quite a bit of that. I think it was this week. Um, and you build your party up, right? You know, we build yep. all of our characters, and then the Dark Lord comes and takes them all away and takes your power away. And then you have to start all over, pick a new job, and you recruit new people, and they have new jobs. So it's kind of like an opportunity for you. The game's like saying, "Hey, try other jobs." Um, and then it happens again. And then everyone's gone and you're back to level one again. And it's just like every time I go to a new land, I am lose my party, knock down to level one. And I'm just like, you don't need to keep doing this. <laughs> like, just let me continue on with my party and my powers that I have and build on that. It just seems, I mean, it is shallow. But yeah, it like adds to the shallowness. You don't um, want to keep repeating the same thing over and over and over? Oh, my God, Anthony. It's uh, not done <laughs> and you know if she wants to keep playing it's cool but i was like all right the sheen has worn off this is not entertaining anymore um and i i looked up at a guide uh to see like how many more worlds there were and they're like six more worlds it's like are you this game should be done now <laughs> come on let me collect you know let me collect all my characters because i'm sure that's what's gonna happen you're gonna find everyone and then you get to choose your party out of the 12 people you have or whatever but like let me get to that point yeah so anyway that's, yeah. that's what we've been playing this week. Uh, but, uh, you know, 25 hours into Horizon since it came out. So yeah. that's the first time in probably a year that I put that much time into a game. Um, that's, you know, over that short of a time span. I think if you get some time this week to play with some extra, you said some days off, get yeah. some time, and you may get, get close to me, I will That'd say. Be cool. I Did doubt you... exactly, but I think... I. Shockingly, the main quest, not shockingly, um, unshockingly, the main quest stories are rather in depth and take a while to work through. Yes. So, <laughs> definitely. Um, yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm definitely going to get some more time. You know, I'm not playing another game. Um, I'm, you know, working and then um, playing that game on my, my free time and doing doing some music. Uh, I've been working with some Ukrainian um in, you know, session musicians or vocalists on some songs this week, which nice. has been 
been nice, um, you know, looking for different ways to aid people in Ukraine. Yeah. Uh, we've, we've been booking Airbnb. You probably, see, you probably <laughs> yeah, saw, this. saw those. Yeah. Um, so we've been booking Airbnbs and then I was like, wait a second, I use Fiverr for a lot of my session musicians. I'm just going to sort by lives in Ukraine. <laughs> and there were tons who were like, you know, you know, using the money to aid our country and whatever else. And I was like, oh, let's get two birds with one stone here. It'd be kind of cool to, to collaborate yeah. and maybe take their mind off of it. And, you know, the songs are, you know, pro Ukraine songs <laughs> I'm writing. And one guy was like, let me take a look at it. See, you know, see if it's something I want to do. And he wrote back. He's like, yes, I very much want to do this song. Thank you for writing it. Um, and that was pretty cool. That'll be at <laughs> nice. the front of the podcast next week. Awesome. Um, I look so, forward yeah. to it. Yeah, it's been, it's been good. Uh, yeah, so that's episode 329 of Prof and Dev Play Games. He is at Summer Speak. I am at Prof Plays Games, and we are going to be playing our separate games over the next week and talk about them next week. I'm yes. sure you'll get another 20 hours or so into Elden Ring by next yeah, week. Yeah, I so. can't imagine not playing Elden Ring right now. So we'll see. I mean, I beat that boss. I don't know what I do next. There's always a thing after building boss and being like, okay, I should look up what I do now. Not look up, but read the stuff in the game, talk to NPCs to get a sense of where I, what area of the map I should go to. Um, yeah. Like recalibrate, like, okay, what's, yeah. what's next? Yeah. That's cool. Or just wander. Who knows? That's fun. Yeah, that's, too. that seems like fun enough. Yes. <laughs> huh, so. But yeah. All right. Well, uh, I'll have, uh, go ahead. I'll have more to say next week. Yes. And I'll have more about horizon. Um, if you like our podcast, please uh, tell your friends, rate us on your podcast service of choice now that we're fucking back. Um, and we will see you next week. Later, everyone.